Hi there, everybody. So, um, I particularly wanted to talk about um, youth engagement in terms of um, volunteering, because that's kind of my my uh, my area of kind of work and involvement in um, the site, the org, and in particular the question and answer service that we run on the site, the org called <coughs> Ask the Site, where young people can ask questions. And um, we cover a, a large number of topics um, and um, respond to them within three working days. Um, and uh, <coughs> so I just want, wanted to kind of talk about youth engagement and social media and actually the interesting things which are kind of happening where um, social media and the social web is kind of increasingly changing um, the way that um, we do so many things. And, um, and I just wanted to kind of share with you um, some of the changes I've seen in kind of volunteer management and how we approach involving volunteers now with the changes of social media. So just to kind of lay out the context, we involve um, a number of organisations, um, charities that specialise in different um, areas, different subjects, such as um, housing, covered by shelter, um, sexual health, um, group cover, um, sexual health on um, past the site. We also, when I started at Youthnet, we wanted to get young people involved in actually helping to answer the questions that came into our relationships um, section. And um, the relationships answers are um, fielded by a number of um, uh, counsellors, psychotherapists, uh, agony aunts, uncles. And um, we've um, involved um, young people to kind of work alongside um, <coughs> these relationships advisors. And so basically, um, the way that it works is um, they provide private answers. Um, so you have that kind of private service that we run. But we also are very kind of keen to scale um, the work that we do. And so um, if uh, a user gives us um, permission, we um, change and edit the, uh, a, a, a proportion of the answers that we get and we put them in a, a public archive. And that, um, to give you an idea, we answer about 800, 900 questions a month privately, but um, the public archive that we also run is accessed by 90, 100,000 people. So it kind of scales out. Um, just to kind of start off, I wanted to, um, I was kind of struck um, by the way, I don't know, uh, most of you are probably familiar with this kind of graph that's um, been done to death by a lot of social media gurus, kind of point to this and say, look, you know, it's a long tail, it's, um, uh, you know, it's the holy grail of the social web. You can make money from the long tail, you can do all sorts of things. But actually, what's interesting in terms of youth engagement and volunteering is that um, if you set, you know, you have like the 80-20 the rule where, you know, 20% um, of um, the people are generating 80% of the, the value. So if you take kind of volunteering, um, very often you'll have a case where, uh, you know, the, the people towards... Uh, <clears throat> that end of the graph, 20% uh, of your volunteers very often are producing 80% um, of your value. And you have a kind of um, other people who are involved who, who generate less. And I think um, what's interesting about this kind of comparison, bear with me for a moment, um, you know, the metaphor, or well, the interesting example is, you know, take a, uh, that Chris Anderson talks about in the long tail, talking about Amazon and how, because, you know, they've got this uh, virtual warehouse, um, they're able, they don't have the same kind of physical constraints, cost constraints, and it allows them to kind of generate uh, a lot of their value from, um, uh, in this case, books, um, where, you know, physically you'd be limited. Um, and I think that's been the case in volunteer management up to now. 
where volunteer, volunteer managers are very conscious that to engage and support and, um, and train the volunteers necessary for the projects, um, they have to, very often, they find themselves concentrating on the volunteers who uh, uh, are generating most of the value and the ones who um, perhaps aren't able to participate as often uh, or aren't able to do it as frequently um, <coughs> generate less, less value, they get, um, uh, they don't get, um, you know, the attention that they, they need. And actually one of the challenges I think um, in volunteer management is that we need to kind of begin focusing and leveraging um, and engaging more um, with the, the people who aren't able to participate as much. Um, what's, um, what's interesting, I did, um, I was just uh, curious because I thought uh, that actually the same thing kind of happens um, with our volunteers, we, um, as I say, we have peer advisors who answer the, the relationships questions. And uh, I plotted this graph from the work that they've done in 2008. This is from, but it pretty, pretty much kind of demonstrates um, that fact that um, you have, you know, a small number who are able to kind of, in this case, answer more questions. And you have uh, a larger number who, um, uh, you know, answer less questions in this case. And I think the questions, um, the, the the challenges that we have in terms of youth, youth engagement, are around um, uh, opening up things and saying, you know, how can we support the people who um, uh, are, are more involved, um, are able to answer more questions, but equally, how can we um, support and leverage even more the people who aren't able to be um, more involved. And so, um, you know, that might mean, uh, in our case, that's been um, running kind of more advanced training sessions, um, running uh, uh, more um, opportunities to kind of get together and meet um, each other for the volunteers um, who are kind of more engaged. Um, but also um, making sure that the opportunity itself is flexible, <coughs> is open, and that the barrier to en entry, I think this is kind of one of the um, key points, making sure that the barrier to entry is as low as possible so that we're able to kind of keep um, people coming through the door and never get to a point where we say, you know, um, sorry, we, you know, we've got to focus, you know, uh, you can only get involved if you're able to kind of commit to six months or something like that, which is kind of very typical. So it's kind of one of the challenges that I think um, uh, in volunteer management and youth engagement is um, opening up um, both ways. And, um, and I guess this kind of means that we need to kind of change the way that we network. So typically you have the join us list model where basically you have um, whoever's kind of coordinating the project, uh, asking young people to get involved in yet another project, um, and then sending out uh, messages or connecting, building up contacts, um, you know, centrally. Breaking that down so that you have, you know, you get down to the point where you have like a, 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 a broader network where um, it's not just one person at the centre um, getting people involved, but it's you know um, it's devolved in, um, responsibility for, for for getting more people involved is um, distributed across the network, and so concretely in our project that's meant um, devolving that um, that role to the peer advisors themselves, giving them much more responsibility, the ones who've got more experience, um, giving them responsibility and in getting involved in training, for example, or helping to support each other um, through buddying, um, and, uh, and, and so on. And so I just kind of wanted to share that quick observation with you today. <coughs>